stubs. in the left wing. So that is correct. They were taking me up. They were taking up the trash. Am I up now? I'm up now. Well, let me ask these guys because they've been working. As we mentioned a few minutes ago, an absolutely gorgeous late spring, early summer day here in New England. And uh, Belmont Shore will be wearing white, the left side of your screen, attacking to the right in the first half. Old Blue wearing their customary all-black uniform as we prepare for this afternoon's contest. There you see Belmont Shore, winners of the Western Conference. Last year, the conference was won by Aspen, and the gentleman went on to win the national championship in this USA Harp Super League. You take a look at the starting lineup today. Baloo, Amato, and Coffin in the front row. Babaki, Quinn, Randall. Now, Rob Randall, multi-capped U.S. player. Chris King, former All-American, and Lines will be the number eight. A look at the back line. Condon and Stevens will be the halfbacks. Hood and... Schlereth, Schlereth, rather, will be the uh, wings. It'll be Holland and Yarnell and Pua in the centers and fullback, respectively. For the Old Blue Club of New York, Dernan, Levine, and Purley will be in the front row. Kevin Swords, we met him a few minutes ago, will be in the second row along with Wilds. Glenn Garonski from UConn, an All-American, along with McLeod and Dilly will be in the back row. And in the back line of the halfbacks will be Aird and McAllister. Stubbs and Wallier will be the wings in the centers. Brunetti and Billy Russell and Newton will be at fullback this afternoon. More about Dr. Chris Newton. Works in the ER in New York. And uh, the young doctor now in an emergency situation right now. He wants a national championship in this Harp Super League. Referee today, Josh Tom Afuna, he's from the Southern California Rugby Football Union, one of the top referees in the United States. If you're watching rugby for the first time, one referee for all 30 players. And uh, Josh is a no not that smile belies a, a personality of no nonsense on the pitch. So we're just about set to go. As you see, Belmont Shore preparing to kick off. And that responsibility be held by Jason Holland. Born in Tasmania. Played for the New Zealand under-19 side, so he has extensive experience in Australia, having been born there and played a lot of rugby in New Zealand. So Holland to kick. 
He scored 23 conversions this year. A pretty good kicker. Multi-talented young man. Plays good center for Belmont Shore. Belmont Shore with their record of 6-1 in the Harp USA Rugby Super League. Same is true of New York Old Blues, 6-1. And, and we're ready to go. The kick sails deep. Is handled by Condon, but picked up quickly. Ball put up by Hood. Or caught by Hood, we should say. Put up by Stubbs. And Belmont with an early opportunity. They go straight ahead. Ruck comes out. Aired to McAllister into the centers. They bring back their number eight, Dilly. Dilly goes down now, and there'll be an offside against Old Blue. So Belmont Shore with the first opportunity today. And interesting, Brian, they decide to run their forwards immediately. But yeah, yeah, I think they really want to get in the ball game. Old Blue, New York, they have a very big front forward pack. And uh, here's a great opportunity for Belmont Shore to get on the board early with a three-pointer, Jason Holland, trying to get the three first three points of the game. And I talked to uh, Phil Coffin early in, earlier today, and he said he really wants to start uh, the first 20 minutes taking it out Old Blue. And then if things open up, let's get these uh, gifted backline players for Belmont Shore a run. But they're going to test the Old Blue right up front, right off the bat. All right, Jason Holland, 25 years old. A mechanical engineer by trade. And this ball approximately 40 yards from the posts. And he puts it right through and Belmont Shore on that 40-yard penalty goal out in front of New York Gold Blue, three nothing. Boy, what a great start for Belmont Shore. Again, they wanted to take it right at him. They did that. They kept the ball retention beautifully. Lawrence Condon, the scrum half, a very gifted player. One of our Game of the Week uh, recipients earlier this year, but a very good uh, scrum half that's going to lead this uh, Belmont pack around the field today. All right, Bill Russell. No, not the Dodger skipper, but one of the outstanding rugby players in the U.S. is going to put it back into play. Russell kicks it deep. Taken by and punted by the number eight, Dilly, and into touch it goes. Get that backwards. That was Lyons again. Yeah, Scott Lyons, he's a very good player. Really added a lot to this uh, Belmont Shore team. Uh, a Kiwi player as well. But again, he got the, he's got that hardness of the Southern Hemisphere rugby players. Him and Phil Coffin, they really instilled a, a very powerful philosophy for this Belmont Shore pack. Okay, a look at Craig Levine, the hooker for New York. And a penalty that'll be against Belmont in the line out. So now perhaps it'll be an opportunity for Old Blue to level the score. And you'd figure with the leading score in the league, they'd give it a go. That'll be Greg McAllister, their fly half. Yeah, it looks like I think he's going to go for position here, uh, Dave. Maybe try to get it down in the corner. Maybe Kevin Swords or Brad Wilds win that line out. And uh, then they kind of drive it in from there. Yep, it looks like that's what they're going to do. This wind's swirling right now, so it's probably going to be a difficult kick from that far out. And uh, did not find touch. It goes through the try zone, so the old blue New York with an error here allows Belmont to have a scrummage well out in front of the 22-meter line. So good break for Belmont after the missed uh, opportunity by New York. Yeah, shaky start by Greg McAllister. He's a veteran. Now he's going to shake that off. He's going to come back with some points here. But again, Belmont sure did catch a break. And they're going to look to capitalize right here. They don't have a whole lot of room on that weak side, but let's see where they go with it. They take a look at the scrummage for the first time. The precursor of the American football scrimmage. Ball down the middle, won by Belmont Shore, and Josh Tomafuna thought that New York dropped it intentionally. That's a major penalty. Up the hand goes. So now Belmont has their second penalty kick, and now they'll attempt to kick it for field position. And once again, they'll rely on the leg of Jason Holland. Holland's punt sends Belmont into New York territory again, and that's where Belmont will be, about 40 yards from the goal. Belmont leads 3-0 here in this Harp USA Rugby Super League Championship match. Take a look at the line out now. Ball must travel straight down the middle of that. Al Amato, who played his college rugby at Loyola in Los Angeles, sends it in. Well, look at the big drive by those Belmont forwards. They're just, even though they're back to the old blue team, they want to get that thing going forward. There's a nice redrive right there, keeping it going forward. And then it looks like it goes to the floor for some good ball for Condon. 
There it is right there. Conant to Stevens. And he's banged up right away. And ball to the floor, although it looks like Belmont has an excellent opportunity to maintain it. Condon working the back of the scrum, or make that the ruck. They're going to go to the blind side. Nice little move over there by Holland. And again, the forwards maintain the pressure on New York. Out it goes again. Banged up there is Stevens. Ian Stevens into the tackle. Can go on, get a third base. Ball squirts out the other way. Recovered by the prop Hurley. He was a wrestler at Columbia University as an undergrad. Here's the kick off the side of the foot, but Old Blue gets a break. Jim Wallier had that ball scored off the side, but instead it was Belmont Shore offside, so New York picks up the break, and we'll see if they can capitalize this time. When New York Old Blue, they got to get the ball in hand and start making some movements together, putting a few pieces together. Right now it's a little haphazard for them. They haven't touched a whole lot of ball. And that ball finds touch safely, so Old Blue will have their first opportunity, really. Let's see if Brad Wilds, he's been their big wall winner. Here's another look at that line. I look at Babicki in the front of the line. He goes high, and then the drive is on. And this is a very powerful uh, Belmont short. Look at Phil Kaufman. Just hoist him, hoist him. Come on, fellas. Let's go, let's go. Keep the drive on. That was great recycling right there by Belmont Shore. Gives Con Lawrence Kahn an all sorts of cherry ball, which he can put out to the back line. Good drive by Belmont. All right, Craig Levine is the hooker for New York. He's also their skipper, 29-year-old, former All-American out of San Diego State University. Puts the ball in, and we've got another whistle. It's like Barge and going across, Dave. It looked like Glenn Garonski, the uh, former All-American from UConn, guilty. And as a result, we have another penalty kick. And it again, it'll be Belmont Shore's turn to try to get good field position on the punt. Yeah, some early jitters here by, by Old Blue. So far, we've seen two missed hits on the kicks. And that line out right there, it looked like it was going to be bad from the start. Ball found a touch off the foot of Jason Holland. And once again, Belmont starting inside New York territory with the line out. There you see how far they are from the post. They play Gaelic football in this stadium as well, so you see the extra set of balls further down the field in that picture, but now we go forward. Here's Condon waiting for the ball. He has it, he's gonna to go to the blind side. Gets it into the hands of Chris King. King, out of the University of California. Boy, oh, he did a great job of turning the tackle there. What's he gonna call? Josh gave him the put in, Josh Tamafuno gives Old Blue the put in, but Chris King, you bring a ball into the tackle, you gotta put it back out on your side, and he just got wrapped up by Old Blue. They stole it right off him. King and Randall, a couple of players with the U.S. experience to take another look at that line-out jump. Ball goes out to Old Blue. The kick up ahead and into touch from behind the 22 is Greg McAllister. The ball rolled out just about where they started just a moment ago. And once again, it'll be Belmont Shore with the put-in. Yeah, not a whole lot of ground kicked up. McAllister still trying to find himself here. A little bit of pressure by Belmont Shore off that line-out. But now it's Belmont Shore. They just get the ball right back in their hands. Quick ball this time. Condon. And they skip it out. Go right into the arms of Holland. Holland and tied up just about at the game line. Good defense by Old Blue, but can they take the ball away? Not this time. Condon outside again. Good break through the centers by Stevens. Stevens still on his feet. Look at the Gets into his number eight lines. Lines drops the ball and it's going to be a scrummage to Old Blue. Well, I'll tell you what, explosive running by Ian Stevens. Boy, a nice break by Shaky Stevens, they call him. He just slithered right through that Old Blue defense. It was a beautiful little dummy. Ian Stevens, a very gifted player. Here's a nice replay. Ian Stevens, a nice fend right there on the captain of Old Blue, Craig Levine. He had Tim Hood on his outside, maybe a switch right there. But he got back inside to Scott Lyons, and then it just uh, went haywire from here with Phil Coffin mishandling. But again, more Belmont Shore pressure. Belmont Shore dominating the early moments of this game. Ball comes out, kicked ahead by Simon Aird. And once again, it'll be uh, an opportunity for Belmont Shore inside the 22 with a lineout here leading 3 nothing over New York. Another good look at Ian Stevens from uh, overhead camera and a good pass off to Scott Lyons and then uh, unfortunately just behind Phil Coffin. But Belmont Shore, like you said, David, they're having a much better go in the early going here. 
Uh, with a line out move, Belmont going to make a run with it this time. It's Ballou. Kelly moves forward, charges ahead, gives it to the eight number lines. And Belmont's forward. It's working away now, just a few yards shy of the try line. Condit looking for it, gets it into the hands of Stevens. Stevens trying to get it into the fullback, Pua. Balls knocked forward, and they're going to let advantage roll, and it's going to be a knock forward on Belmont. It'll be a scrummage to New York. Boy, Belmont sure, they sure do look crisp right now. Excellent line-out work and in the loose play. Here's Look at this great pass by Lawrence Condon. He has complete control right now. Quick flick out to Ian Stevens. Nice little dummy. And then Paul, perfect pass right in his hands. Unfortunately for Belmont Shore, Paul, Paolo knocked it forward, and Old Blue regains a little bit of life right here, but still 10 meters out from their own end goal, from their own try zone, and Belmont Shore applying the pressure. All right, they're going to pack him down to look behind the New York scrum. In it goes to the non-offending side. Now it'll be Aaron's turn, Aaron out, as he does to McAllister. They're going to put it out to Russell. Russell's going to kick it into touch. He just does clear the 22. And once again, Belmont Shore with great field position and a line-out opportunity. Yeah, Old Blue right now, all they're doing is giving Belmont back possession. They did get a little bit of room there, a little bit of breathing room. But Belmont Shore, the way they've been dominating the line-out so far, uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see some uh, This pressure is going to finally crack this Old Blue defense if they keep it up. All right, the line-out calls. And Al Amato will be putting the ball in for the Belmont Shore side. Down it comes quickly. Condon once again gets it out. They move it into the centers very quickly. Once again, it's Holland. Holland tied up at the 22-meter line. They're going to run with the forwards this time. This is Babeki. He's tackled just inside the 22. Gets up, goes again. This time it's Quinn. The big second row gets another five yards. And Belmont Shore again applying big pressure, but this time they went over the top. They obstructed the ball, and as a result, New York will have a penalty kick. And they'll put, give the ball immediately to Greg McAllister. McAllister looking for touch. And finds the seats. There's a better kick this time. It is Old Blue's line out since it was on a penalty kick. So hopefully they can string something together here. Look for Wilds maybe in the front of the line out to try to get some, uh, some clean ball for Old Blue. But that Belmont Shore front eight has been playing outstanding. Rugby be great recycling. The only problem Belmont Shore's had so far is in the tackle when they've lost possession on a couple of occasions, including that last one, Road Blue. They're very cagey, very experienced team. They'll turn the ball on a tackle. And take it across the center. That was Kevin Swords. And now New York moving toward the halfway line. Belmont begins to repel them, though. And it looks like Belmont's going to come up with the possession, and wow. they do. Those are That's two, a big takeaway, Two huge drives. Yes, you're right. Big. Belmont Shore, again, a good recycling. Condon very quickly gets it out. And another great break. This is Stevens to go again. Stevens to Holland. Holland way outside. He goes to Hood. Hood is in for the try. Great work. Great work by Belmont Shore. That pressure, they just kept it going, kept it going, and finally there was a crack. Ian Stevens, he's the one key for this back line. He's the one who's finding those gaps. And then Jason Holland, great support. And then Tim Hood, of course, you got to have him on your outside. Here's Stevens with a break up front. Jason Holland gets it. He sees his options on the outside. Look at Tim Hood. Nice gather right there. Still had a little bit of work to do right here. But he wins the race to the try line as he beats Richie Stubbs a dot down to give Belmont Shore the first try of the game. With that try, five points awarded to Belmont Shore. They now lead it. 8-0. One more look at it. Good pass, good catch, you said. You know, you talk about... Uh, the nickname for Ian Stevens being shaky. When you grow up in Wales, and he was born in Swansea, there you see, they live so close to the street, you come out your front door, you have to be dodging cars. That's why they're so good in Wales at that. Oh, that was a lovely little shimmy right there. <laughs> and Tim Hood again, he hasn't been playing the game that long, but he's finished off a number of tries for Belmont Shore this year. And there you, that's what you gotta have on your wingers. You gotta have a finisher. Tim Hood, an outstanding try scorer this year for Belmont Shore. And Jason Holland's looking to extend that lead it's 8-0 right now, looking to get to 10-0 for the visitors. Holland has already kicked a 40-yard field goal this afternoon, giving Belmont Shore their first three points off the penalty. And now a conversion, and the conversion is kicked from a point perpendicular from where the touchdown was scored. It's called the try. And the rush by Russell, and the kick off to the side, and that will make the score remain constant at 8 -nil. Belmont Shore over New York's Old Blue. 
Boy, Oak Blues, they just have to start mounting some kind of attack. They do have the wind going in their face right now, but if they can put some kind of points on the board before halftime, I mean, it's vital that they do. Belmont Shore, are very experienced team. They're going to be able to hold on to a big lead. Oak Blue, they've got to get in the game right now. Bill Russell. Good crowd. Not at Fenway today. They're watching rugby here today. Good take on the other end. That by Amato, the hooker. And out it goes again. The punt ahead by Stevens. Will find touch near midfield. But Old Blue now will have the opportunity just inside Belmont Shore territory. And Old Blue now trailing 8 nil. Belmont Shore has really taken advantage of this wing. They're trying to put Old Blue back on their back foot. Uh, trying to get it deep in the Old Blue territory. And if Old Blue, of course, they got to start mounting attack, try to get it into that Belmont zone and take advantage of any kind of opportunity they have down in that area. Big battle up front, one by Old Blue. They've tried to push it forward on Belmont before and were repelled. Let's see if it happens again. Ball to the floor. It's going to come out to the backs. Waiting for it is air. They go to Garonski. Garonski carries two with him before he goes to the floor. Quick out again. Straight ahead for McLeod. Ian brought down. Big Sorge. Kevin Swords now moving forward. This is much better play by Old Blue. They just got to keep it tight. Get it down in that Belmont zone and don't make any mistakes at this point. Air gives it to Swords again. sides against Belmont Shore. They must stay behind the last man, the last foot in the loose piece. In that instance, a ruck. They are offside and now an opportunity for Old Blue to get on the scoreboard. And you'd figure Greg McAllister right out in front of the post about 20 yards away. This is a... Well, well let's hope so. I mean, he's, he, never, he shanked a couple of punts earlier, and I think this would be great for his morale if he could finally notch a three-pointer. But that was much better rugby by Old Blue. They really did an outstanding job. Uh, keeping that ball in possession, recycling there. You see Simon Aaron giving it to his big forwards, and Kevin Swords had a couple of big rambles. And let's see what McAllister can do with a kick here. Yeah, he puts it right through the post. We got ourselves a ball game, David. Oh, blue. McAllister now with 94 points on this season. He led the season in the regular rounds with 91. And Old Blue is on the scoreboard now. Our score, 8-3 in favor of Belmont Shore. Scoring values, five for the try, two for the conversion, three for penalty goals, and three for dropped goals. And the drop kick restarts play here. Taken by Old Blue into the tumble. And we have a knock on on New York, so it'll be a Belmont Shore. Another opportunity deep inside. And Brian, that's really an unforced error there. Oh, oh yeah, he went into tackle again. It's so vital when you go into a tackle, you have good body possession and good ball control. And uh, Old Blue didn't have it on that play. Watch for Shaky Stevens again. He's been having his way with McAllister and the, the loose forwards of Old Blue so far today. All right, Condon not liking the way the scrums had squared up, so he waits and uh, they will repack down. Probably the most uh, remarkable group activity in all of sport when you see eight sets of legs on each side, very strong men pushing up against one another like that. It's precise, Brian. It doesn't look terribly sophisticated, but believe me, it is. Well, we're having a great battle at scrum half right now. Lawrence Condon, Simon Aaron, two very gifted all-around scrum half. Simon Aaron, Chuck Nijin said he's New York Old Blue's most valuable player this year. Lawrence Condon, as I said, he's got all the skills as well, so they're going to have a great battle in number nine position. They go straight ahead with McLeod into the Belmont Shore tacklers. Garonski this time, the other flank forward, and he's met by the boys in white, put to the floor. Out quick by Air, the kick this time by McAllister. Will he find touch? Nicely done. Ball bounces in, then out of bounds. They'll mark it where it went out. Right, there you go, Greg McAllister. He put three points on the board. Look at that confidence. That was a beautiful kick. It really gave Old Blue about 50 meters on that play. Even though Belmont has the lineup, they have a long way to go. They're about 90 meters away from scoring points. In Old Blue, New York, I think they're fighting themselves a little bit. Well, their second trip in recent memory. They came in with three points last time to draw within five. Eight to three, our score in the first half here in Dillboy Stadium, Boston, Massachusetts. 
Now let's see what Belmont does. They got the drive going. Let's see if they're going to run or just try to carry in safety. They, they run from here. Belmont! Out! 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 Condon's pass goes to Stevens. Stevens mishits it. He wanted to find touch. He didn't. Instead, he finds Chris Newton, the emergency room doctor. Now he's under pressure. He better call for an ambulance. Down he goes. And Belmont may come up with it. Instead, good play by the hooker. Good hustle by Levine. Pass now gets away, and New York's got to stabilize this possession. Yeah, they just got to take it up forward. There's Craig Levine again out of the loose play. He's all over the place. That was a good play by Simon Aird as well. Securing ball. Good hit right there. Both teams, they're starting to throw their weight around now, Dave. Well, that uh, race period of getting settled in has come and gone, and you're right, Brian. They are playing with more ferocity than, say, a few minutes ago anyway. Here we go. New York pushing forward with their forwards, inch by inch, getting close to the halfway line. Belmont being warned by Tamafuna to be onside. Here's Kevin Soares, the former Army captain, across the halfway line. And out it goes quickly again. Through the centers, knocked away by Vince Brunetti. No knock on, instead they'll play on. Belmont short at the opportunity, but instead Old Blue gets it. Kick ahead, nicely done by Aaron. And they're gonna put the pressure on Pua, Pua rather, and he calls a fair catch, and he'll have a chance to put it back into touch. Much better recycling by Old Blue. They didn't pick up a whole lot of ground, but they were getting the ball back. Craig Levine all over the place. Simon Aaron again, pick up the real nice plays. And you see the quick tap to Simon Air to Jason Holland. And he doesn't find Taju there. Give you a knock right there. Hamilton is going to let it go. All right, McAllister with a break there. McAllister in the tackle, leaves him from behind. And Old Blues forwards in the right position now. Air waiting for it, trying to dig for it. He's going to give it to Garonski. Garonski to Swords. Swords just throws away Hood. Garonski again. And forward they go. This time it's wild. It's the other one. Forward. Good recycling by Old Blue. They're taking two. It's Swords. He's playing outstanding right now. There you see Dave Dilly with a go as well. And look at the backs are getting involved. And Craig Levine right there at the spot. Let him play, Rack! Let be a knock forward. And we have scrum to Belmont Shore. Well, as you mentioned, in multiple phase. Rugby played by Old Blue effectively, moving the ball deep inside the territory of Belmont Shore after Belmont Shore could not convert a uh, free kick into touch. Here's another look at Simon Airy getting it out. Big defense there by Scott Lyons and Craig Levine. Boy, he is playing outstanding so far. He wants this championship game. He's been with Old Blue for a few years now after a good career at San Diego State University. All right, Stevens kicks to the midfield again. They're testing Newton. Now it's an opportunity for Chris. Chris tied up by Stevens and others, but another opportunity. Here's the chip from Aaron. Aaron may find, no, it went straight into touch. It'll come directly back to the point from where he kicked it. Ryan, I tell you what, had that breeze not carried that ball, that would have been a very effective kick, yeah, and given Belmont Shore a lineup, but very deep inside their own territory. Yeah, that looked dangerous. Uh, Simon Aaron, unfortunately, just about a foot outside of the touch line, and of course, if you're behind, in front of your 22 meter line, and the ball goes out on a fly. It comes back to where the player kicked it from. So Belmont Shore about uh, 75 meters out uh, from another try opportunity. But again, Old Blue starting to pick it up a little bit. And they're playing out standing rugby. Chuck the Indian, I'm sure. Please for his club. They're playing now. All right, shaking up on the play now is Ian Stevens. And he's at a critical role in today's game. I believe he's looking at the right knee. They're having a look at that. As you mentioned, from Swansea, Wales, played for the national under-16, under-18, and under-21 teams for Wales. So obviously a storied uh, career. Now lives in Southern California, where he uh, not only plays rugby, but he is also a Cracker Jack medical sales manager. Well, we saw him last year with the U.S. team in Wales, uh, back in the homeland. He had an outstanding tour there. And again, we're seeing what kind of player he is out here today. That'd be a big loss if he has to pull himself out of this lineup. He's playing a very good game for Belmont Shore. It looks like Alamado's getting some treatment as well. He, I think he's got a little bit of a, a blood coming out. And of course, Josh Tamafuno wants to make sure that uh, none of the players have any uh, blood flowing freely. Well, so I tell you what, the way the game has changed in the last three or four years, taking blood seriously now, rugby a game that uh, would never have any thing to do with any sort of pre-substitution. And now you can replace a player temporarily if he is uh, exposing any blood out there. Of course, everybody knows why. Things have changed uh, so much in the last five to ten years. 
good crowd on hand today and they're tell you what this is absolutely gorgeous weather as, as you have a look now at Alamato 5'9 195 pounder he's the hooker and I think Josh Tamafuna says no not this time so they got to do it again I think Josh was waiting for the field to be cleared of all the trainers and everybody else who came out to help the field is clear and now we'll see Amato's throw Nice take by Quinn. Kyle Quinn's been very effective in the middle of the line so far today. And then Belmont Shore again with a big drive. You can just see Phil Coffin and who drove off that one. Belmont Shore again with her Lucy's coming off the top. Scott Lyons took that into the tackle. They go back inside. Another big hit. Lyons again. And the penalty against Old Blue coming over the top. Not allowing the player on the floor to release the ball, so another major penalty. And I believe Old Blue is starting to mount up a pretty good penalty count at this point. Jason Howe looks like he's going to find a little bit more real estate at his own 40-meter line, trying to get in the Old Blue half and mount an attack from there with another line out. Holland with a nice spiral into touch inside the territory held by Old Blue. And it'll be another line out for Belmont Shore. I've done a very good job, as we mentioned just a moment ago. We saw Kyle Quinn. He's 28 years old out of Cal State University, Long Beach. He was an All-American there. Well, there was a big hit by Scott Lyons. They've been very effective with Lawrence Condon, giving it to his loose forwards. Kyle Quinn again in the middle of the line. Outstanding. All right, trying to get Powell in the line. They get him there. And once again, Old Blue diving over the top. When a player is tackled, the defensive team must give him an opportunity to place the ball. And Old Blue charged uh, for not allowing him that opportunity. And so another penalty kick and another great opportunity for Belmont to move well inside New York Territory. Another look. Pua. Ray Pua. Here's another look at Greg McAllister going over the top. I think that's what Josh Tamafuna might have seen. And McAllister not trying to get out of the way. Uh, it's very tough to see down there, so Josh, I think, made that call. And you see Jason Holland trying to extend the Belmont lead. He's got another chance for a three-point. This is a long kick, a pretty good win going into his face, uh, at, the, at the moment anyway, where it's been given, uh, blowing at his back, but now it's uh, circled and come into his face. But Jason Holland, a very strong leg, about 40 yards out or so. We already saw him make one from about the same distance. Let's see if he can do a second one. Wilds is the uh, old blue lock is looking at you to see if the ball hits the post and looks he's got plenty on it. Is it over? It is. I don't know about plenty of it, but they went over nonetheless. 11 3 Belmont short. Jason Holland, a great kick. If you get an opportunity to score some points, you got to take advantage of it. Belmont short. Good play right there. And uh, again, maybe a little bit of a controversial call by Josh, but uh, hey, that's part of the game. And old blue now are down 11 to 3. All right, Russell's kick across the way. Booted straight ahead by Condon. And there's an opportunity now to get it out. Pass goes to Russell. Russell on the run, looking for help. Gets it to Newton. Newton near the 22. Looking for help. Gets it from the forward pack of the New York Old Blue side. They better play it soon, otherwise it'll go the other way. Good sword. Sword. Takes about three guys with him. Good presentation. Excellent ball for Simon Aaron. Aaron gives the ball to his skipper Levine. The hooker goes in. He's tackled. Aaron again. He goes down. And we'll see if New York can recycle the ball again. Oh, a couple of tough yards, and I believe it was a knock on a Chris Dernan, the prop, and that's exactly what it is. Big Chris Dernan. He uh, playing this year with a calf tear, so they're hoping he can make it today. Big boy, 6'4", 290 pounds. That is a lot of weight, isn't it? Glad I'm retired. <laughs> And now Belmont is going to try to mount a challenge from back in their own territory. Instead, now the kick by Stevens. Stevens challenging Newton. Newton can only watch it bounce once into touch. And as a result, Belmont Shore, by virtue of a good kick by Ian Stevens, out across the halfway line, although Old Blue will have the throw in on the line out. 
Well, that was a nice play right off the back of the, the scrum there. They created a little bit of opportunity for Ian Stevens to create some space for himself, and then he just drove a beautiful kick into the other, into the old blue half of the field. But it's been a very good game so far, 11-3. Both teams are really going at a tooth and nail. Craig Levine, the hooker for Old Blue, about to throw this ball in. It's having a blinder out there. Quick take by Wild. New York moving forward. Almost mishandled, but caught again by McLeod. McLeod takes more white-shirted Belmont Shore players with him. Out it comes to McAllister. McAllister tries to get into the centers again. Bernetti. Ball is knocked forward. They do not allow the advantage, so it'll be a scrum to, let's see, New Belmont. Go. Right. Now it looked like I think Belmont Shore, Mike Chris King, in, in trying to gather that ball may have actually mishandled as well. But here you see Simon Aird getting the ball out. McAllister Brunetti just can't handle it. And I think right there by Chris King, Josh Tamafuno thought he saw a knock on. But Belmont Shore getting off the base of scrum. Good work right here. Lions Pua, the fullback, on the blind side. Takes it into New York territory. Belmont digging, looking for it. It's going to go the other way. On the far side, it's Richie Stubbs. who's finally knocked into touch. That was good defense by Old Blue, turning a, it looked like a very dangerous Belmont Shore opportunity into a, a take for Old Blue. And now uh, they go into touch. However, it is Belmont's throw in. But again, great outstanding uh, back row defense by Old Blue. They're able to stop that uh, thrust as Pua lost the ball on the tackle. A good, good look at Alamato, Belmont Shore hooker. Took it up front this time. And once again, Belmont, I'm impressed today, Brian. Belmont asserts himself on their one line-out ball. Here we go again, out to the back line. They tried good defensive pressure that time by the back three, actually two of the three from Old Blue, but there was a knock on before then. Yeah, Dave Dilly, that's what you got to do. You got to get an Ian Stevens face, and he was right on it there. Unfortunately, tapped the ball a little bit, knocked on, and Josh Tamofuna right there. Here you see the pressure. Ian Stevens, there's the knock on by Dilly. It wasn't it. Wasn't intentional. Uh, if it was intentional, it could have called a penalty on Dave Dilly, but the uh, referee just said it was a basic knockdown. The ball not hooked. Stayed in this near the front of the tunnel, so they're going to scrum it down again to Belmont Shore. A couple of halfbacks. You can look at the back of Dave Dilly. They got a little bit of room on the weak side, Dave. They do break it on the weak side. Condon goes down. Recycles. Stevens. Tied up. Down he goes. Knocked down by his opposite number. And we're going to have a scrummage. And it's going to be to the attacking team, Belmont Shore. Yeah, Ian Stevens got the ground that time. If, of course, if it was caught up in the air, uh, Ian Stevens not being able to get to the floor, then it would have been an old blue put in. But Ian Stevens did a very good job there. And it was good defense by the centers. There you see Stevens is able to get cracked through that defense. But you see McAllister and Brunetti able to stop on the center. All right, the break from the back of the scrum. This is Lines. With about seven yards on the pickup. This time they have Red better Rob Randall moving forward. Out it goes from Condon into the centers. This is Holland. Holland tied up. The Belmont Shore once again attacking inside New York territory and a whistle and I believe it's a knock forward with a scrum to New York, but that's exactly what it is. Yeah, that's that's where it got caught up in the air. Uh, Josh Tamafuna right there on the spot. Uh, we just talked about it. If you get the floor and you place the ball down, it's going to be your put in, but uh, the Belmont Shore ball carrier caught with the ball in the air in the tackle, not coming out. Josh awards the, the scrum put in to Old Blue. Good scrum move here. Blind side again. Here's Aaron. Aaron Steve's going. He's got a chip ahead. He had Newton outside him. Newton's trying to give chase. Instead, the ball taken down by Hood. Hood with help. And the kick. And that's off the side of the foot of his counterpart, Chris Schlereth. Yep, that was Chris Schlereth's first touch of the ball. He's he suffered a groin injury when the Eagles Asian tour not too long ago, and they uh, sent him home to try to recover. He's playing in the game today. Here you see the big break by Simon Aird. He saw he had a little bit of help on his outside, but good defense right here by Tim Hood. The ball just eludes Chris Newton and Simon Aird. Can't handle Hood. He gets it out to Schlereth, and then Schlereth pretty much shanks it into the crowd on his first touch of the action. 
but Old Blue put in. And not clean. We have a penalty, and that's going to be against, I think it's against Quinn of Belmont Shore. Yeah, replay of that. You'll see uh, he came across the line. You see Josh Tomafuna gesturing. They just came in and slapped it. So that's a penalty kick, and McAllister will take advantage of that opportunity, get about another eight or nine yards, and Old Blue will have the line out throw in. Very close game, 11 to 3. We don't have a whole lot of time, uh, running time, of course, in rugby, unless for injury. And so there is a little bit of play with Alamato when he got his head tape. But uh, it's, we're nearing the end of the first half. Old Blue hanging tough, 11 points to 3 in Belmont's favor. And they are attacking. They're deep in Belmont Shores end. They got to get some points right here. One try so far in the game. Tim Hood of Belmont Shore. A wonderful break by his fly half, Ian Stevens. All right, now, Old Blue trying to get an equalizer here if they can. If they score the convert to try, there'll still be a probably short one. And now the ball goes the other way. Belmont Shore. So New York with an opportunity. They could not convert it, Brian. Yeah, you got to take advantage, especially when you uh, get so few opportunities deep in a, another team's half. You got to take advantage of when you can. And Scott Lines again showing some Yeoman's work here, just pounding the head of that old blue defense. The kick by Stevens carries into touch, but not a great deal of yardage. Still with time remaining in this first half. We're in injury time now. Maybe four or five minutes left. But uh, we'll see if there's a, uh, an opportunity that uh, Old Blue can cash in at this point. Well, here's a good opportunity right here. Line out, about 30 meters out, 22 meters out, actually. They've been playing them pretty good lately. Uh, there's a bouncing ball, Simon. Ian McLeod, nice gather right there. Here it goes out. Now they're still having trouble. Greg McAllister tap the ball forward. They're going to let him play with the advantage. And an opportunity for the kick by Stevens. Stevens looking to find touch. He does. And they're going to play the line out or the scrum. At the, they're going to play the advantage. And it'll be a line out to Old Blue. But they got it right ahead to scrum there, Dave. I would agree with you. I don't know if this is a much of an advantage or not. You saw McAllister had a little trouble gathering that ball in. It could have been a Belmont scrum, but Ian Stevens cleared it. Old Blue line out. And that's what referee Josh Tanafuno saw. Clarification on the advantage. If there is a penalty, the referee may allow the play to continue to see if it becomes an advantage for the team not offending. That time he thought it would be an advantage. Instead, now look at this. Old Blue is inside Belmont territory. We're going to put it out to Russell. Russell's going to be met there by one, two, three, now four Belmont short players. Good job getting it back by real Russell. Chris Newton having all sorts of trouble. He's finding himself alone a lot of times. There's some support by Ralph Gurley. Now Blue and Blue are desperate to get that ball to the floor. I believe they finally do. And their hooker playing halfback, Craig Levine, sends it out. Up and under ball, and that is between the fullback and the wing, and it's going to go directly in to the end zone. And as a result, with the new laws, that ball will come back from the point where it was kicked. Huge break, huge break for Belmont Shore. That kick uh, just finding its way. It looked like it was heading to touch, and then it just caromed into the end goal area over the dead ball line. And it's Belmont's put in right around midfield. Good attack in position. They got about 15 meters here on the weak side. Look for Tim Hood possibly coming down this weak side wing. McAllister shifted his defense over, so they got that covered. Let's see where they go. The blind again, once again. They work off the lines. Across the halfway line now. Quick out the other way. They got men out here. Good little gallop this time, once again by Holland. Holland was looking for Hood, but they ran out of space near the try line. Holland puts it down. Condon gets it to Lyons. Lyons. About three or four yards before he gets stopped. Now Condon looking for the ball again. It's King. King ahead for three or four yards. Inch by inch they go to Belmont Shore. Once again, they lure New York into a penalty. And this one, well within range of Jason Holland, notwithstanding the win. Yeah, just when it looked like Old Blue were really mounting an attack to get back into this game. Belmont Shore comes right back with recycled ball. About four or five phases of beautiful action. Good recycling. I tell you, I'm very impressed with Lawrence Condon. He really has this forward pack for Belmont Shore going forward. Doing an outstanding job. There you see, look at Josh Tamafuno with Lawrence Condon right here. Gives it out to Chris King. King just, King just burrows ahead. 
And look at the Belmont forwards. They get in support. There's you see Phil Coffin, the old man, even lumbers in at the end. But Lawrence Condon, again, it's the man who is leading this forward pack. And there you see the blow up by Josh Tomofuno. And Belmont sure has a chance to extend the lead to 14 to three if Jason Holland can hit his third penalty of the day. Holland is two for two from penalty kicks, but he missed a conversion. Although the conversion kick was uh, a very severe angle. He's approximately 25 yards away. And he does not strike this one cleanly, so Old Blue dodges a bullet in the waning moments of the first half. The score remains 11 points for Belmont Shore, three for Old Blue New York. Yeah, big break right there by Old Blue. Nice kick by Bill Russell. Is that going to stay in bounds? Yeah, Jason Holland gathers it in. He's in front of the 22. Is he going to run? No, he's going to kick. He's going to challenge. He's going to challenge Newton, the fullback. He said he wanted it. He's got it. Back he comes. He's going to put up the high ball. And will this drift into touch? No, it stays in. Condon with the take. Condon's going to go down with it. Belmont, very quickly to seal the ball. And let's see if the uh, shaky Ian Stevens can get going forward. Gives it away to Lines. Good hands by Lines right there. Yeah, I think Josh Tamafuno caught a knock on. Yes, he did. Uh, Phil Kaufman, I think, had trouble just getting it off Scott Lines there. But good play by Lawrence Condon again, securing ball and Rob Randall right there for support to allow Belmont Shore to retain possession. Excellent work. Good communication. All right, Simon Aird, the club's most viable player, number nine. There he is on the gallop. Gives it back inside to McLeod. McLeod inside. Big hit delivered by McAllister. You don't see Flyhouse doing that, but you don't see many Flyhouse six one two and a quarter either. No, you don't, Dan. Now McAllister said that added weight helped his kicking game. Kind of like Mickey Lola did. <laughs> There we go. Take Here him out, Russell in the open. Out, Russell out, was out, out. to beat. Great tackle go. Go. across the way by Tim Hood. Simon, 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 Sim
changes in the last five, six years of rugby. And though the old days, you could spin a scrum, but nowadays it must stay square with the field. And once again, Old Blue, and in particular, Simon Herod will have the put in. We mentioned he's the team's most valuable player. He's also an investment banker. And they continue to march forward to Old Blue. Very close. The old captain sword in the middle of it all. I think Belmont's going to come out with this. Yep. And Ian Stevens, uh, can he go? Yep. yep. Wire gets it in. Somebody offside from Old Blue. Oh my goodness, Wallier had a lot of room and backs on the left side and instead of having counter opportunity, counter attacking opportunity, that's a penalty kick to Belmont. And Brian, I would guess that would pretty much uh, quash any opportunities this half. Well, you think so. For New York. I'm not sure how much injury time there is, but uh, Josh Tamafuna, of course, has a, a beat on that. He looked at his watch right there, so I don't think there's a whole lot of time. See how's that for a prediction, Dave? And a boy, without even looking at your watch. Ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the conclusion of the first half of play here in Boston. And our score at the half, Belmont Shore 11, Old Blue New York 3. We'll be back with our halftime activities from the Harp Supermatch 2 right after this. We're good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, I could use one. Yeah, we could use one. Okay, great. Thank you. Hey, what do we got? Do we know? I don't have a walkthrough. I've not been told anything okay. yet. I have no idea what we're doing for halftime. Uh, we need to, somebody needs to talk to you. Uh,
No. It's not hot plugged in, that's why. <laughs> Okay, here we go. I'm on. Okay. Nope, there's no monitor here. Yeah, but Brian's going to be commentating on it, so he doesn't, and he doesn't have an IFB. Are we going to commentate on that try? He, he can do the play-by-play -play on the try. Yeah. And if you want, I'll cue him and just say, here's another look at the try in the break by Ian Stevens. Even, Ian Stevens, and then he can do follow from there. Ian Stevens, Jason Hollins to Tim Hood. Right. Yes, I believe so. Pretty early, though. Steven. Steven. Yeah. yeah. Well, they can put the video of the, my the video over my voice. Yeah. They'll make it work. Jason Holland actually did a lot of the good work on that one. Okay, Dave, what do you got? Uh, you know, I tell you what, you know, Belmont Shore has made their opportunities in Belmont and Old Blue New York for a team to come back in for second year. They 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 look. Uh, my comment on this is so far you would figure Belmont New York from last year coming more poised. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay, hook him up. Right. Okay. I got one here for you. Fine. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We gotta hurry, folks. Okay. Got him? Can you turn it down? Yep. All right. What? Okay. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. So it's pretty even. I mean, do I? I don't have to remember all that, do I? Okay. <laughs> Okay. All right, so co hello, comment, try, he's on his page, I throw to Watto, come back from Watto, throw to Wales, come back. Make sure you, while he's talking, make sure you go me to the next one. All right. Let's do it. We don't have time. We don't have time to screw around. John, 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 relax. We're going to do halftime at the end of the game. We'll never get through this. There's not a chance. Why don't you tell the truck that we suggest? It's going to take us five minutes. These teams are ready to go. Are you ready? Tell them we suggest doing it after the game. Dave says we should do this after the game because the refs are about ready to go. Okay. Stand by. Okay.
in Boston, Massachusetts, halftime. Belmont Shore 11 and the Old Blue Club of New York 3. Brian, so far, you'd expect Old Blue, having played in this championship match last year, to come in with the composure. It's been the other way around so well, far. Well, at least at the start, you saw Belmont Shore come right off the bat. Did extremely well. Old Blue had spurts after that, but uh, again, Old, Old Blue uh, a little rattled at the beginning. Belmont Shore got the only try the first half. It was a beautiful play. Nice run here by Ian Stevens going through the gap to Jason Holland. Look at Jason Holland. He does the work over the top to Tim Hood. Outstanding catch right there, and he's able to finish off the try but again it was a very even first half after that big start by Belmont Shore you look at the stats right now very even almost all the way down the line scrums lineouts even turnovers very evenly contested game all right let's take a look now at the sweet 16 our domestic scores from around the United States in this championship weekend Brian, I tell you what, it must be very frustrating for that New York side two years in a row coming up with just the bouquet. Well, you're right about that. It was a six-point game for about 20 minutes in that second half, and it looked like Old Blue were going to be able to nudge ahead, but Belmont Short scored two great tries to put the game away. Ian Stevens, we saw how much of a factory he was in the first half, and again in the second half, he played a vital role. You see him receiving a pass from Condon right there. Nice little dummy. Uses Tim Hood on his outside and beats Craig Levine for the try, which put Belmont up. And then here's the backbreaker right here. Good, solid scrum ball. Scott Lyons has it at the base. Lawrence Condon goes wide, back inside, and Lyons just pounds through that New York defense. But it was an excellent game. Both teams, a real physical encounter out there. We saw some great play by Kevin Swords and his forwards, and we saw some great play by Belmont Shore. But what a way to finish the second season. A cap, a wonderful cap to the second successful season of the Harp USA Rugby Super League. As you take a look back down on the field right now, the trophy presentation taking place. And it's a very happy group from Southern California, Brian. And let's talk now about the Gilbert man of the match. Well, Ian Stevens, again, we talked about him in both uh, segments, uh, halftime and postgame. Ian Stevens is our man of the match, our Gilbert man of the match, MVP of Super Match 2. Congratulations, Ian Stevens and the Belmont Shore Rugby Club. All right, Belmont Shore with the championship of the Harp Super League. That'll do it for today. For Brian Vizard, I'm Dave Sitton saying so long. We'll see you again right here on Championship Rugby. We're ready to go. Can we give him the signal to go? All right, we're back in Boston. Second half play about to start. Belmont Shore 11, Old Blue, New York 3. Gorgeous afternoon, and we're set for the second half. The kick from Greg McAllister starts play. Taken on the other end by Ian Stevens, and he delivers a beautiful punt to touch and that's where we uh, pick up play here in the second half with a New York Old Blue line out inside Belmont territory. Well it's going to be a great second half Dave just an eight point differential this between these two great clubs and I expect to see Old Blue take full advantage of any win they have at their back try to capitalize on any opportunity in that Belmont zone and we got a great opportunity right here. The take by Brad Wilds Belmont. Having to defend now, big New York pack moving forward at him. We'll see if they try to wear down Belmont Shore in the second half. Air waiting, gives the ball. They get it to their former wrestler, Rod Perley. And another opportunity. Again with the forwards, straight ahead, but stalled as Belmont throws their defensive weight back at New York. 
I'll tell you what, Brian, if they do this for a while, there's going to be some tired forwards on that field. Yeah, there's some big drives going on. Right now, the ball coming back is slow ball. It's allowing that Belmont Shore defense to, to realign themselves, but Old Blue taking it forward. This time it's McLeod. Ian drives inside the 22. New York with a determined drive to begin the second half. And still they maintain the possession. Well, I think what Chuck did is you told these guys at halftime, let's keep it up with the big boys up front and see what happens at that point because they had not, none of their backs have touched the ball yet in this big foray. You talk about big boys. Chris Dernan, number one, went down a moment ago, 6'4, 290. Still, Old Blue with the possession. This time out to the backs. McAllister takes it inside again and knocked down just shy of the 22 meter line. Boy, look at the big drives going on up front by Old Blue. This will wear down that defense. It'll wear down the offense, too. You got to take advantage when you get the ball down to this area. All right, it's picked up by Goronsky. They go with air, air to the blind side to McAllister. McAllister, and they're into touch. Yeah, that's going to wear these teams down, those balls like that. And Old Blue, they got to take advantage of it. When they, uh, no silly penalties at that point, no knock-ons. they got to make sure they have sure hands, able to keep that retention going. But that was a nice display by Old Blue. Put Belmont back on their heels a number of times. All right, Alamato. Taken by Quinn. Belmont trying to shove it with their forwards out toward the 22. And Belmont not successful. They give it all away. Somebody said something, and now all of a sudden it turns from a scrummage to a penalty. There's a little lack of composure right there, lack of discipline. First of all, they turned the ball over. That was bad enough, and then someone said something to the referee. Gave him an opportunity here for points. Uh, looks like McAllister's going to go for touch, and then uh, look for Brad Wilds to take down some good lineup ball. And that big drive. Look at that kick. Beautiful. Very nonchalantly hit it just about, what would you say, about uh, two meters from the uh, try zone. Yes, yeah, a very nice kick there. Maybe you should try that nonchalant more often. Space here, guys. Whatever works. That's right. Of course, he had a breeze blowing directly on that same path. That is back. On the goal goes. line, 11 white. All right, here goes Craig Levine's throw. Two meters away are Old Blue, and now one. And Belmont Shore hanging off for dear life right now. And now, Old Blue is held up, and somebody from New York said something. And I, we said before the game, Josh Tamafuna is a no-nonsense referee. He's not going to let these guys get out of control. You don't like the call, you better keep your mouth shut. Two consecutive plays where somebody on each one of the teams has said something he ought not, and as a result, a penalty. And now, New York, who was just a, a meter away, finds themselves defending well, there you 25 see, meters away. Looked like Simon Aird got into Josh Tamafuno's face, said something to him right there, and Josh Tamafuno, he's not afraid to blow the whistle. You're right about that, David. All right, Quinn again with a good take. Good hoist by his props. Waiting for it is Condon. Condon serves it out to his fly half Stevens. And they crash it straight to the middle. Big hit, as you mentioned. Back to Stevens again. They're going to challenge, and this time they pick up the fullback once again, Chris Newton. Newton feeds inside to Richie Stubbs. Stubbs tied up, but does deliver the ball back. Good play. Move it straight forward with Chris Dernan at 6'4", 290. That's a big boy running at you, David. There's Glenn Goronsky, another big man. There's some big forwards in this team. 6'6", 260-pound Kevin Swords. Him and Scott Lyons having a little bit of a duet there. And New York maintains it. Here's Goronsky again, straight in front of the post. He's down to 20 meters out. Goronsky gives it to Dernan, and here's Swords again. I'll tell you what, for his age, it's just remarkable what he does on a rugby pitch. Oh, it's fantastic. It wasn't bad when he was younger either, playing for the United States. Here's Dernan again. Dernan is tied up and about a meter shy, so Old Blue right back at the door. This time it's their hooker and skipper, Levine, although he's knocked backward. And we've got a put in on the ruck. Ball was not going to come out, says Tom Mafuna, so it will be a scrummage to Old Blue. Boy, that was some great pressure right there by Old Blue. Kevin Swords, Chris Dernan. 
Craig Levine, outstanding recycling. Here you see it right here, but look at Belmont Shore repelling each attack. Oh, beautiful hit. I think that was Rob Randall throwing Craig Levine back about five meters. Looked like Belmont might possibly have been called for offside right there, going over the top, but Josh Tamafuno just awards the scrum for Old Blue. Old Blue with 10 ruck and maul wins in this half. 10 loose pieces. Belmont just once have they won here to begin the second half. Well, they're starting out like Belmont did in that first half, but just taking it to the Belmont shore forwards, going right at them. I'm sure that's what Chuck Denigian told these guys at halftime. Just go straight at them, fellas, straight at them. And here you see Kevin Swords bouncing off Phil Coffin, just meters short of the line. But again, look at the body control, the body presentation, puts his body in front of, between the ball and Belmont Shore defenders. That's a great play by Kevin Swords. All right, the put in by Aird, and we have a whistle before it, and the front row went down. Dangerous stuff. So, all those big men, one, two, three on each side, set, down it goes, in it is. And it was spun enough that the referee, Josh Tomafuna, wants it again. Yeah, ball came back slowly. It looked like they tried to have uh, something going to the strong side with Simon Aird, but it was a little slow now. It looks like it's gonna go weak. They go eight, they go back to Goronsky again. But Belmont prepared to defend against it. But then their swords again, right through the middle. They're close to the line. Will they get it over the line? Yes or no? Try awarded to New York. Well, here's a controversial try. It looked like Josh Tamafuno was trying to get to that back of that mall. And neither touch judge could see it. And the Belmont short players, I think they were saying they were short or a double movement or a knock on. Maybe we can get a better look at it. Simon Air, the scrum F, he's awarded the try score. But great pressure by Kevin Soares. He just drove it up. And there you see Soaresy right there. Great presentation. I think he did get the ball, nose of that ball down right there. Oh, yes, he did. If he didn't, then Simon Aird was right there. But it was outstanding pressure by Old Blue. A well-rewarded try after great pressure. That was about a five-minute spree right there. Where they're just camped on the Belmont line. And we got a big game, 11 to 8 at this point. Well, 12 loose pieces for the Old Blue pack. And now the... The conversion good by McAllister. So Greg McAllister's conversion, that's his 21st of the season. And boy, do we have a ball game. Our score now, Belmont short 11, Old Blue 10. So one point after about uh, 49 minutes of play. Here's another look at it. You see Chris Dernan just power over. I don't sure if Tamafuno called that one or not, but then Simon Air dove over, and Josh Tamafuno surely called that one. All right, here's a restart kick. And McLeod goes straight ahead. On the far side is McAllister. McAllister near the touchline. Instead, Belmont comes up with it. Here they come. Stevens. He needs some help. He needs some help. Are they going to get there in time? Nope. New York came up with the ball. New York stole it right out. Chris Dernan again in the loose. The big man's been in a lot of loose plays so far. And speaking of loose play, look at Sorzy. He keeps going. And Craig Levine. Those two guys have been playing outstanding so far today. And it's picked up by the other hooker now, Amato. I'll tell you what, there's some big time hitting going on amongst those two forward packs. And now a penalty against New York will get Belmont the kick. Yeah, it looked like hands in right there. Jeffrey, uh, referee uh, Tamafuno said hands in by Old Blue, getting that ball back in the ruck after Belmont had stolen it. And Jason Holland trying to gain some ground here, put it deeper in the Belmont shore end of the pitch. Kick, and it is on the money, about 15 meters shy of the try. Here in the second half, a one-point game. Belmont Shore with a one-point advantage at this point. 11-10 over Old Blue, New York. Motto gets his instructions. This is Belmont's first opportunity, really, in the old blue half this second half. Let's see if they can take advantage of it. New York has been dominating. Quinn, down it goes. There's Kelly Ballou. He gets stopped by more old blue defense. Condon goes outside. He's dangerous to Stevens. Stevens down toward the corner. Stevens across. He's down for the try. 
Oh, great run by Ian Stevens. We saw him set up that first Belmont try, and he took it upon himself all alone on the second try. Found a little seam on the weak side. Outstanding run by Ian Stevens, and that propels Belmont short back up into the 16-10 lead. Uh, it must be disconcerting for Old Blue to pull within one and within seconds after uh, their converted try, Belmont able to respond with the try. We'll see about a conversion, but a nice little run. And he's been breaking that weak side all day long. Well, you know, Lawrence Condon made a nice, difficult pass going back to back the backside. And look at even Stevens. He's just got too much speed for Craig Levine. He's able to down it. Blows right by Glenn Garonsky. And he had Tim Hood on his outside, so that kept the defense on us. And then Ian Stevens just able to cross over for Belmont's second try of the day. All right, Jason Holland now will attempt the conversion. He is uh, straddling the touch line. And from about 23 meters out, and uh, they allow the rush. You can rush, the defending team can rush the kicker as soon as he makes an offering to kick, and the referee, Josh Tamafuno, said, yep. Well, you don't see that Holland too often. Know, Jason Holland had uh, attempted it, so big heads up play by Billy Russell. And no conversion attempt, or put it down as a block. Yeah, <laughs> the block, he just got the big paw up on that one. But Bill Russell heads up play, trying to get Old Blue back in the game, down by six. We'll see if that plays into it. Six instead of seven, converted try now, goes ahead. Well, I was gonna say that was a lucky break by Belmont Shore because two guys just watched that ball hit the ground. You wanna catch the kickoff on the, uh, on the fly. And uh, Lawrence Condon just stepped into touch when he had the ball in his hand. Old Blue, big opportunity right here. 10 meters out, line out. Brad Wild's been winning everything up front lately. Let's see if they go continue to, to hit the front of that line out. They got a short line. Sorzy all alone at the back against a former teammate, Rob Randall, on the U.S. squad. Uh, I don't think they're going to challenge yet. Now they slow things down. It's Josh Thomas. He wanted a full meter between the two lines. Here we'll go see if they test it back there. No, they go in front. And the ball is taken by Wilds. Now they just got to have some composure back here. They can't go out of control with his drive. They got to get the ball at the back. See if Sorge can get it at the back and do one of his patented three yard try bursts. They're very close again. Aaron's trying to peel it back and get it to his teammates. And it's going to be a Dodges the bullet. I'm not sure. Again, dodge another bullet right there. It looked like they were marching just meters from the line once again. But good Belmont short defense is able to keep the old blue team out. Let's see if we get another look at how close old blue were. You see Simon Aird right in the middle of it all. And I believe that was the knock right there. Yes, the referee caught it. He was in the perfect position for it. And Old Blue, they just can't finish right now. Right, take a look at Aldo, Al Amato out of Loyola, Los Angeles. The grew up in Southern California, 27 years old. He's shaken up, so we're going to tend to him for just a minute. Yeah, he was right in the middle of that big pressure that uh, Old Blue instilled on this Belmont Shore squad. But Belmont Shore, you got to give them credit. They keep repelling these big attacks by a, a big New York Old Blue front eight. And again, there you see some of the crowd on hand enjoying this beautiful weather in Boston. Last year, we played this match in San Francisco. And there was grand weather. We saw Aspen, the gentleman of Aspen, win the first Harper Super match. And this year, their opponent in that match, the New York Gold Blue, trailing, trying to win the one for their team on their coast. All right, Condon put it. Ball the second row. Stevens takes Newton back. It was going to counterattack though. Newton melted. Now we'll see how quick New York can regather over him. Looks like they did a nice job sealing it. The whistle comes. It's going to be a scrummage. Well, that was a good play by Chris Newton. He took it straight ahead. Didn't try to get fancy with it this time. Kept the ball in hand and was able to get it back to his team. That was an outstanding play by Chris Newton under some serious pressure with about three or four white jerseys just swarming all over him. Keeping New York in attacking position. Well, the play from the base of the scrub again, finally picked up by Dave Dilly, but before that there was a knock on so the scrub to Belmont Shore. They've worked that very effectively have New York today. Numbers uh, 
Well, they put Dilly on the break here. They use Goronsky very effectively and McLeod. There's a lot of speed in the back end of that uh, New York scrum. You can see a little bit of frustration in Winnow Blue when they uh, don't execute those kind of plays. But uh, hopefully they can continue to mount the attack and uh, get score one here coming up. King and Randall do pretty much the same thing. Here's Timmer Yarnell, former All-American out of Stanford. He's not had many opportunities to carry the ball today. And the ball pops forward. Advantage given. And the ball goes, oh, they say it in a touch. No advantage that time, says Josh Tabafuno on the knockout. Well, that was an outstanding play by Dave Dilly to allow Old Blue to steal that ball. He went into that ruck and just drove the Belmont short players off and allowed some of his teammates to come in and gather the, the Belmont uh, loss of possession. But Belmont Shore regains control, and it's their, uh, in attacking position from uh, deep in the ring. The center's a ghost. Hua. And he gives some room to Hood. Hood on the gallop. Hood's got to beat Newton. Hood is by Newton. Hood is down the touchline. Hood is in for the try. They get him out. Uh, yep, I think they're at touch oh judge Kevin Hanley. Oh, my goodness. Just a meter short. Chris Newton was all over. Tim Hood was able to track him down. Outstanding run by Hood. It keeps Belmont down in their end, but uh, great run. Pua set him free, outstanding play. Look at Pua, releases Tim Hood right here. Plenty of green space ahead of him. And now you see Chris Newton come into your picture and look at how he cuts him off, has the angle. I don't know if we're gonna be able to see it from this camera if Hood steps out or not. Yeah, I think maybe right around there. Oh yeah, good call by Kevin Hanley. And it keeps Belmont Shore off the scoreboard, but Tim Hood, another good run. And Pua, nice break to release him. Hood with a try in the first half, Belmont, almost had his second, but now Belmont Shore deep inside New York territory, although it will be a New York throw in on the line out. Taken down by Wilds. And I don't think uh, New York wants to play with the ball on their end right now, given the fact that Belmont has shown it, they've got people who can counterattack. Here's yeah. gonna come the kick from Brunetti this time. Brunetti makes sure and belts that about 15 rows deep into the seats. But now Belmont Shore inside the 22s. You have another look? There you see another look at Tim Hood with a lot of green in front of him. Thought he could maybe turn the corner on Newton and it almost looked like he was going to be able to do it. And then Newton just at the end there is able to, to probably knock him at a touch just before Hood dots it down. Good camera work there. Quinn. And once again, Pua. Boy, well done there. That was a beautiful play. Hitting the line at pace. Oh, kind of tied up right here. Cloud was close to getting a penalty on that. Now they go to the blind side again. Pua again. Who's going to win out? New York Old Blue gets it this time. And they deliver it to touch. And uh, once again, Belmont will have the opportunity from the line out, however. Boy, and now they say it's a scrum. Now they're going back to uh, the point where there was apparently a knock on, as indicated by Josh Tamafuna. So it'll be scrum to New York. Clever work by that Belmont back line. Many dummy switches and miss uh, passes, and then all of a sudden you see Pua coming right up the guts with a beautiful take from Ian Stevens. Good push by Belmont's pack, but they'll scrum it down again. Looks like we may have a reserve getting ready, Derek Magwood. Looks like he's gonna probably be coming in for Chris Dernan in the front row. Derek Magwood, it's not much of a change in stats. He's about the same dimensions as Chris Dernan. Chris Dernan, a great, valiant effort with that uh, injury to his calf muscle. But Derek Magwood, not a whole lot of experience, but a very gifted athlete. He's six foot one and weighs 275 pounds. Dry. Here's the kick, it's not gonna make touch. Hood with the good take just outside the 22. He brings it forward, sets it for his teammates inside the 22, but I believe New York has taken it away again. Instead, they almost had it. They're gonna give the uh, scrummage to Belmont. This is a great opportunity for Belmont Shore. Yes, it is. Uh, Tim Hood again took it up hard, took it straight into the old blue defense. Uh, had a little bit of trouble getting it cleanly back to his Belmont teammates, but uh, referee Tamafuna said it wasn't coming back. The ball's on the floor, put into Belmont Shore. Okay, the next team who scores points, David, is going to be huge. If Belmont can get another try, that might uh, be enough to get out, uh, out of 
of Old Blue's right reach, but if Old Blue can put some points up, I mean, we've got a, a, a nip and tuck ball game to the wire. Well, a six point game is, uh, in the modern game, is not that much. A converted try beats you. Yep. So you need more than seven points if you want to have any type of comfort at all. But the way Old Blue it came out to begin this half, I wouldn't take comfort until the whistle was blown if I were Belmont Shore. Condon has trouble at the base of the ruck. And it's going to be now a scrum for New York. Yeah, Lawrence Condon, when he tried to pick that ball up, looked like he had a bit of a trouble, and then Old Blue took advantage of it. They went right over the top. And Tamofuna awards Old Blue with a put in. They're still defending. They're on their 22 meter line. They got to mount something, and uh, you know, but they got plenty of time, like you said, and it doesn't take much to get back in this game. An afternoon of scrummaging, again and again and again. Here, with the scrum going backwards, has to corkscrew a kick from behind. Hoods has a look at it. The ball went directly to touch. He was behind the 22, so they mark it approximately 10 meters inside New York territory where Belmont Shore will have the throw in. Yeah, Belmont Shore seems to be pushing a little bit harder on the scrums right now, uh, putting Old Blue on their back feet. That's very difficult for a number eight, a number eight at the back to retain possession. And it does not give his scrum a very good ball to get out to his back line. So I think Old Blue will like to improve on their scrummaging if they can. Win. Over and over again today, consistent. They go into the center once again with Holland. Holland is tied up. The ball comes back quickly to Connor. Here's Stevens. Stevens went to Randall. And he went down to the ball and did not release it. So now it'll be a penalty against Belmont. And we'll see if New York can capitalize. Yeah, it looked to be a pretty good opportunity there for Belmont Short. Rob Randy, you don't see him losing the ball too much in a tackle, but Old Blue. Again, a bunch of mixed uh, experienced veterans. He's able to tie him up there. You see the penalty count right there. And Old Blue again picks up a lot of good ground They're inside the, the 40 meter line of Belmont Shore, about 40 yards out of a try. And both teams look, to, look at all this mauling. The mauling's affected both forward packs. As you see him come up to the line a little bit slow, but Old, Old Blue, when the time comes, when they have to run, you can bet they're going to be all over the place. Now the discussion in the breeze here, Craig Levine making very sure about the line out call, where it's gonna go. It's gonna go up front, taken once again by Wilds. Good battle today in the line outs between Wilds and Quinn, both number five locks of the two teams. And very cons consistent taking of line out ball. However, now we have a... Yeah, I think referee Josh Tamafuno said it wasn't straight. It was thrown too far over that old blue line. Of course, it's got to be thrown directly down the center of the two lineouts. And then Belmont Shore had the option scrummer lineout. They took the scrum, and there's the result. And here's a big kick back to field. It is Newton. Newton's going to let it roll, and it may roll through. Oh, my goodness. This is going to come all the way back from the point where it was kicked. Wow. And that's about 60 meters the other way. Boy, what looked so promising for Belmont Shore turns into a disaster. But Old Blue going to have a great attacking position, a lot of room on the weak side, just 22 meters out. Oh, about 30 meters out. But again, great attacking position. They got plenty of room on the weak side if they want to try a scrum move. That's quite a swing in the old days. That would simply have been the equivalent of a touchback that would have been a 22-meter dropout. But now with the new laws, if you kick that ball, all the way through, effectively icing it, to borrow a phrase from another sport. It comes back from the back to the point from where it was kicked. I think that's a great law. We saw a lot of that done in the 95 World Cup, and that's why they changed the law. But here's a good scrum break off the right side. Good run by Wallier. Wallier sets the ball down on that far side, taken forward by Garonski. Aired and teammates. Here's Swords again. Good for one yard. And the ball is not recycled. It'll be a scrummage to New York. Boy, one thing about Kevin Sorge, no matter how upright he is, or no matter if he doesn't have a head of steam or not, he always crosses that gain line. I mean, the guy is fantastic that way. And more times than not, that ball is going to come back. The Bold Blue is still in a good attacking position, about 25 meters out now. Still room on that right side. Taken to the blind side by Dilly. Old Blue packing in, 23 meters out. 
there, he's waiting to get the ball out, he does. Goes to McLeod, McLeod breaks through the 22. He's 20 meters out. Swords, and that time they stood him up quickly. Brian took his legs out from underneath him. Dilly with it forward again. Methodically, McLeod picks up, goes forward. Tom Apuna warning Belmont Shore to stay on side. Goronsky down this time. Aired waiting, looking for a slot, and he is put down immediately. I'll tell you what, there's a real reluctance to go back. And now, what do we have, an offside? I believe so. We have a penalty awarded to Old Blue, and it looks like the touch judge also has cited an infraction as well. So the, the referee, Josh Tomafuna, will discuss it with Kevin Hanley on the side, and they will come to a decision. But right now, it looks like it's going to be a pretty good opportunity for Old Blue unless this call is reversed. There's about oh, 12, 13 minutes remaining in this game, so there are a couple of options left for Old Blue. They may kick the uh, penalty goal. They may try to get the try right now. They're down by six, and you are watching the second Harp USA Rugby Super League Final, now known as Super Match 2. Super Match 2, you got to love that. And we've seen a great game so far, too. Hard-hitting clubs just going at it. It looks like uh, Josh Tamafuno is talking to Kevin Swords. He, boy, it's not like Swords to do anything uh, against the rules. I'm not sure if we're going to see it or not. You see Ian McLeod goes straight up into the tackle right there. I think he's talking to Rob Randall as well, so it's Randall and uh, Swords. No, that's it. It's uh, Brad Wilds, actually. Brad, Brad Wilds, Wilds and yeah. Rob Randall having a little bit of a go. I don't think that's anything to uh, they sorted themselves out, it looks like. so, And that's what rugby players normally do in a match, sort themselves out. But the penalty is going to be awarded to Old Blue. And what are they going to do? They're going to go for points. It looks like McAllister is, I think he's going to kick it close again or try to. Oh, look, look for another line out. Is he going to do that nonchalant thing? Yep. Pretty much. But this time with about the same result, I think they want to be a little closer. He's about uh, two, maybe two and a half, three meters away from the try line where it'll be a New York line out. Let's see the Call big, line, they're going to throw it to Brad Wilds in the front. Uh, they've been doing that all day long. And again, they do it. Driving the center, the swords they have it. Old Blue just continues to drive. Well, they're close to the line. Here's McLeod waiting to pick it up. McLeod trying to push it in, but he's met there by Lines. Lines stops him short of the line. <laughs> and up again it goes, and it's going to be a scrum awarded to Belmont. What a grand disappointment for New York. Well, Ian McLeod, he went in straight away, and Old Blue, uh, Belmont Show were able to hold him up in the tackle, and of course, that scrum goes to Belmont Shore. And more words by Old Blue results in a penalty. Uh, that kind of indiscipline is just going to kill you. And there's going to be a chat now. And that was uh, Jim Wallier who came over. Now, did Wallier say something to Tom Afuno, or was Wallier told to tell his bench to be quiet? I think Wallier was uh, charged with the, uh, the verbal abuse. Now the opportunity is for a kick by Ian Stevens, and he delivers it wow. out near midfield. What a swing of events yeah. for New York again. I tell you, these late stages of the game, that's when teams have to really show their discipline, no matter what the referee calls. Even if you don't agree with a call, you just got to play on. And what turned out to be a scrum for Belmont Shore, you could have possibly put him under pressure. It would have been a throw, and if that Belmont Shore even had kicked the ball to touch, it would have been a New York lineup. As it is after the penalty kick, it's going to be a Belmont lineup. So a big swing here in the latter stages of the game. Good take once again by Quinn. Condon waiting, directing, is gonna take it out. Stevens, right back straight inside to Holland. Holland getting close to the midfield strike. Condon feeds it out again. Stevens again, getting close to midfield. He's loose. Stevens delivers it out. Nicely taken by Yarnell. Nice, uh, and look at that great run back in the middle of the field. Opens up more play for Belmont Shore right here. Not a great pass right there. Jason Holland tried the drop kick, and that was a, a, not a very good attempt at a drop goal, but good pressure. And again, Ian Stevens, the guy is creating some opportunities for Belmont Shore today. Grand play, and also that former All-American, Timmer Yarnell with a great catch. There you see Stevens right here just shifting right through that old blue defense. Look at the hands right here, flicked it right over the top. Timmer Yarnell in support, and then he keeps play going as well. Belmont Shore can't capitalize on it as old blue has a 22 meter dropout right now. But again, they got back down in the old blue end of the half. Bill Russell kicks cross field. Taken, delivered up, kicked straight ahead by Holland. 
And this may roll through. And it is across the dead ball line. Now, had that ball stayed live, it would have made it interesting. <laughs> but, it looked uh, like Chris Newton was just teasing the defense right there, or the offense, I guess, Belmont Shore. But the ball is going to come all the way back near midfield. Another scrum. We've seen three or four of those kicks that have gone through the back of the tries on the dead ball line. And the other team is awarded the scrum. This is a good opportunity for right here for Old Blue. And again, not a whole lot of time left, but just but down by six, a converted try will pull him in the lead. All right, blindside break again. Aaron gives it to Newton. Aaron again. This time goes out to the back. Get McAllister. it wide, get it wide. Here's Russell. And they cannot complete the pass to Stubbs. Stubbs has to go down and cover it again. And it looks like Belmont's going to win this possession after the drop pass. Belmont taking it forward now. No blue player's got to get out of the way. Condon's got it. A little hesitation. Now go to the reserve there. That's the Becky. Here's Randall, the veteran, the 10 time United States player. He goes forward for three or four yards. Oh, we lost the ball in the tackle. That's twice Rob Randall's lost the ball in the tackle. And with a penalty, same result. They're going to go quickly. Eric taps it, goes. Eric breaks a tackle, but throws it away. And Belmont receives the break. Stevens with a freebie. Going to kick it and test Newton. And the fullback, well, he's not going to be able to play it dead this time, or will he? Nope, live ball. It's going to be a 22 meter dropout this time. You see how those precious few last feet when the ball is down, it stayed in play. Well, it's a hard field out here at Dillboy, and you can see that ball just bouncing right through the try zone. That was almost a, a near bounce through as Ian Stevens again hit it pretty well, but just a little bit too far. Uh, what he'd like to have done is just put the ball about one meter off from the, from the try zone and made Newton make a play of it. And we've seen him get trapped a couple of times, but Chris Newton having a pretty good game at the fullback position. Russell with a trick play, with a quick tap. But Belmont there to defend it. And Belmont picks it up. Amato feeds it. Now look at this, Belmont Shore attacking there, five meters shy. Here's Condon, he's knocked down. They gotta send it out wide left. Belmont Shore's got the numbers out wide here. And with his scrum to Belmont Shore. Oh my goodness. Right so that. They were complaining that there was this conduct on the part of Belmont Shore. Yeah, I think Kevin Sawyer thought Belmont Shore may have been playing that on the ground, and he was very upset there, as you could, uh, as you could hear. But the scrum is awarded to Belmont Shore, just five meters out from the line. A great attacking position. They may have enough room on the right-hand side, but don't be surprised to see this Belmont Shore pack try to push it over themselves. Yes! Blind side goes back in. Yeah. 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 Way to go! Way to go! Only one side. They've been working that eight-nine combination all day long, and now it pays off. Lines with the try, and that puts Belmont Shore out in front now by a count of 21-10. Big goal right here. That'll put him uh, to 23-10. But you saw the great work and the great communication at the back of the scrum. Here's the key right here, just getting the ball, locking out, and then all of a sudden Lawrence kind of nice presentation, and Scott Lyons just blasts right through about three old blue defenders. Excellent scrum move. Here it is again, back inside. I tell you, with the flankers having to stay bound, it's a very difficult situation for the loose forwards. You saw Dilly come off the scrum, but right, right back inside, and Scott Lyons bashes over. One more look at it. There's the put-in right here. Okay, gets back to Lyons right here. Look at the nice presentation for Condon. He just goes right back inside. Dilly goes wide. And you see Scott Lyons hits pay dirt for Belmont Shore. The conversion attempt is wide, so the score remains 21-10 in favor of Belmont Shore with just over six minutes or so remaining in the match. So New York, they've got their work cut out for them if they want to uh, get a trophy. Last year, they came up short missing in this match against Aspen, Colorado. And right now they find themselves trailing by 11. Well, this is going to force them to get a couple of tries. Uh, they're down by 11, uh, a try, a converted try, and a penalty is only good for 10. So they got to get a couple of tries right here and at least convert one of them. 
And there is a uh, big miscue. Billy Russell kicks it straight into touch. The wind's playing a little bit of havoc with the kickers today. We saw a number of balls miss hit or go straight into touch. And you don't want to see that happen, especially right after a team scores a try. And again, a great opportunity for Belmont Shore. Left side of the field's wide open, right side of the field's wide open. And Ian Stevens, I tell you, he's very dangerous in this kind of situation. Well, you correctly described the wind earlier today swirling, and that's exactly what it's done, and that's why the kickers oftentimes find themselves confused. Here's another kick, this one by Holland. Holland is going to put it down in the corner, rolls into touch just inside the 22-meter line where Chris Newton chases the ball against the wall, and that's where they'll begin again. It'll be an old blue lineout. Now you can see the opportunity for Belmont Shore. There is a slight breeze for the moment behind them. They've got an 11-point advantage, and you could expect them to start playing the ball into New York territory time and time again. Well, Belmont Shore, you're right. They're happy to beat Camp down in here, even though it's an Old Blue put-in. It's that much further away for Old Blue to score. The take, as usual, Brad Wiles, 36-year-old out of UConn. He played basketball there, by the way, for the Huskies. Now he's playing, good, uh, he's playing rugby for New York. And it's starting to unravel for Old Blue as they tie up Aird. Moving ahead now, that's Magwood. Again, the fire that we saw in Old Blue to start this second half. They're not there in numbers now, Brian. They're going in as individuals. Yep, exactly right, David. they got to start mounting an attack. Here you go. Brunetti. Mini Brunetti goes straight into Belmont Shore. I tell you, this could be a turnover right here. Nice hit of the ruck right there. I think that was Greg McAllister. And I'm not sure if that ball's going to come out. Yes, it is. Good play. Eric digs it, gets it. Go to his number eight, that's Dilly. Dilly gives it back to Eric. Attempt to the kick, it's blocked. It's a race now. Wallier trying to defend, and it's Hood trying to get to the ball. The ball goes into the try zone, but it's going to be called a knock on on Hood, and that is just as well for Belmont, because that ball had been tucked all the way through, that would have been um, a dropout. So yeah, New York. New York under pressure with the scrummage deep inside their own territory, Brian. Tim Hood knew he had a, he had one opportunity to try to scoop that ball up. He made a great effort with it. Uh, unfortunately for him, went into touch. There it is right there. Good action by both players going for the ball. you got to do that. Great commitment. And again, if, uh, if anybody just stood up on their feet, the other would have had it. So it's a good opportunity for Belmont Shore. Playing good defense by Old Blue. Aaron with the break. Gives it to Sword. And New York with a little bit of a run. However, McAllister is knocked to the turf. They keep it again. Here's Brunetti again. Oh, they got to look outside here. They got to look outside. And the ball tips and goes the other way. Amato, the hooker, straight up the gut. No one's going to get him. Amato picked up the knock on. No one there to defend him. And in he goes straight down the middle. And Brian, the uh, large lady who concludes operas, is warming up. Yep, that, uh, I think that just about did it right there. Al Amato untouched. We saw. The tries all had to be so much hard work today. And then Alamato just picked up the loose ball and missed cue by Old Blue, and he just goes untouched, 40 meters right up the guts. Outstanding run by Alamato. We saw him injured earlier, but a uh, great effort right there. There you see the bat down by Jason Holland. Lawrence Condon gives it to Amato, and then he goes right up the guts. He said, oh, my goodness, look at me. Look at this. Free space ahead of me. Just goes through the poles. Easy try right there. I don't think he's going to get any easier. And Alamato had an outstanding season for Belmont. So you see Lawrence Condon right there. He's the one who made the play. Strips Old Blue of the ball, passes it back. And then Alamato says, what's going on? I've never had this much free space. And he finishes it off. Well, Holland with the easy conversion. And then there was a penalty on top of that. So we start with Holland's penalty kick from the halfway line. And look at this. They go right down there. So after Amato scores the try, Holland with the conversion, somebody in the sequence surrounding the try said something on the part of Old Blue. Josh Tomafuna said, that's fine. We'll give a penalty kick. And look at this. They're right back at the door again. And this thing is getting uh, out of hand. 28-10 now, Belmont Shore. And Brian, unless something miraculous happens in a very short period of time, it appears that that cup is moving westward again. Well, Belmont Shore, they've had a number of seasons where they've never come away with any kind of hardware. They've always had outstanding teams. And this will be their first piece of real hardware that they've ever had. And uh, congratulations to Phil Coffin. There you see Amato right here finishing it off one more time. You see him raising the finger. Yeah, we're number one. And Belmont Shore looks like they're going to go to the Super Match 2 and win this championship.
They have an 18-point lead and just a couple of minutes left on the clock, David. It's insurmountable. And Old Blue, it looks like they're just playing out the clock. Belmont Shore continues to stay in Old Blue end of the field. And uh, they're going to come away with this championship. All right. After the uh, infraction, it'll be a scrummage to New York. Let's see about keeping the discipline. They're going to have to run it from here, but Belmont knows that. McAllister drags a few with them. Trying to get beyond the 22 meter line. Now cycle back into the forwards. And New York playing strictly for pride now. An offside call against Belmont. So it's going to be a kick to New York. And I think, Brian, at this point, uh, it's going to have to be a kick. There it is. Eric with the tap. Bernetti. Bernetti's just going to take on people. There he does. Takes two with him. He took Stevens and Holland. Picked up again. This time. It's by Pearly, and the ball goes the other way, and another penalty. This will be offsides against Belmont. So another tap kick opportunity for New York. The waning moments of this game. Are they going to take a kick? Yep, here's the tip again. McAllister right through people. McAllister stays on his feet. Condon finally wrangles him down to the turf near the halfway line. Here's Aird again. Aird goes outside. They're looking to go on that. Blind side. And they better do something with it soon, otherwise it's going to be a scrum the other way. Yeah, they it's do. Out now. It's out now. It looks like Old Blue's going to set it. Simon Aird gets it out wide yet again. Aird goes to Garonsky. Garonsky is put on the floor. Aird goes out again. Here's McAllister. McAllister looking to make the break. Instead, he's tackled by Stevens. Aired again. Aired moves forward. Immediately he's met by the white shirts of Belmont Shore. Give Old Blue credit right now, Brian, in the waning moments. Showing some uh, heart, but not enough. And with no time remaining, that is it. It's in the books. The Harp Super Match 2 has come to its conclusion. And the winner today, Belmont Shore. They are the champions. They defeat New York Old Blue by the final score of 28-10.
USA Rugby Super League Super Match 2. Belmont Shore of Southern California. They beat Old Blue 28 to 10. Wow, Brian, I tell you what, it must be very frustrating for Old Blue. Two years in a row, they lost in San Francisco last year. I know they had great expectations staying on their own coast, but the boys from Southern California prevailed. Well, Belmont Shore, very good effort in that second half, and it was so close. It was a six-point game at one point for about 20 minutes stretch there, and then Belmont Shore put it away with a couple of great tries. And, of course, Ian Stevens, we saw him in the first half have such a dynamic impact, and there you see right there, a nice little dummy, uses his uses Tim Wood on the outside so good and then is able to dot down to give Belmont the lead and then with the game still in jeopardy you see this great scrum move Lawrence Condon back inside the Scott Lions Lions just pounds over for the winning try or the, the cushion I should say Belmont sure a great effort in that second half and again they were, they were very uh, rewarded for a good effort today all right well super match two is the con at the end of the season now for the harp super league two years in the books now let's go down to the field we take a look at some of the shots you see of the trophy presentation down there on the pitch and it's a happy bunch from Belmont Shore. Uh, they, a very well deserved victory today 28 to 10 uh, again a good display uh, wins their first championship ever for Belmont Shore Rugby Club but again well deserved congratulations Belmont and Ian Stevens as you described a few moments ago our man of the match did a grand job today. Now, Ian Stevens a Gilbert man of the match the MVP of Super Match 2 again without his play in the back line it could have been a much different situation, much different outcome, but Ian Stevens, our man of the match. All right, once again, our final score, 28-10, Belmont Shore, the second-time champions of the Harp USA Rugby Super League. For Brian Vizard, I'm Dave Sitton, inviting you to stay tuned. We'll see you next time right here on Championship Rugby. This is Fox Sports World.